What's up my comic book brothers and my comic book sisters from another mister. Today we're going to do a comic book review of Spawn issue number four and the strange connection that you guys didn't know about between Spawn, Violator, and Malboja. Brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. We begin this issue with the quick summary of the events that transpired. Al Simmons has been trying to cope with his new so-called reality. You know, being Spawn. Also bringing Bob back from the dead, selling his soul, and getting shot five years into the future as a white man when he's a brother. You know, a brother from another mother. <laughs> Anyways, his whole reason for returning was his unrelenting love for his wife, Wanda. Now he sees that she is happily remarried and has a child, and that means he has been the problem. Now he feels like less of a man. His heart has been torn apart both emotionally and physically. After getting his heart ripped out by Violator, Spawn tells him, let's try that again, but this time try to do some real damage. As flames come out of his hand and he heals using his necroplasm, Violator can't believe what he's witnessing. He questions who and how Spawn got such powers. In his eyes, humans are fragile for this kind of thing. It's not every day humans experience their own heart being ripped from their chest. He looks at Spawn's beating heart in his hand and he realizes the obvious and he is enraged. He doesn't need a heart! And he thought he had the power stronger than Spawn. How can Spawn survive without a heart, he asked. No one warned the Violator about this. The Violator wants to have some words with the Master. Spawn continues his silence. For what does a man say to an offspring of the pit of hell? Maybe the obvious. Nothing. He picks up his own heart, heals it using his necroplasm power, puts it back in its place, and he's like, yeah, that's better. Now pay attention, demon. I know your master. The scum screwing with my life too. He seems to enjoy ruining people's life. And for the life of me, I can't understand why. But if he's messing with you and changing whatever deal you made with him, that's your problem. I'm still trying to deal with my problem. Unfortunately, you think things can't get worse for you? Wrong. You got an immediate problem to take care of. Namely me, because I'll be damned if anyone's going to rip out my heart and not pay. And Spawn blasts him with the energy blast. The force of Spawn's blast cars a hole through the violator the size of a basketball but it doesn't seem to phase violator you idiot you're not the only one that can survive an organ transplant i had the power long before you stumbled upon him and spawns like well so what's your point bruh my point Boy, if you're looking to play the old game, eye for an eye game, you're a bigger fool than I thought. Allow me to demonstrate. And he tosses Spawn on the other side of the panel. And the reason why he does this is to flex his physical superiority. And Spawn lands on his feet and he's like, okay, so what's your point? Listen, I'm not here to play some game with you, says Violator. I'm here to keep you aligned, make sure you don't stray. Why he's making such a big deal out of you, I still haven't figured that out yet. But until such time comes, it's my job to show you the road. And keep in mind, the prophecy was made in Spawn issue 174 or 175, which we did do a review on. Link in description. Feel free to watch that after watching this video. And Violet continues his speech. Just hope I don't get to strangle you with them. He wouldn't want that. Be a pity to see Spawn go down. <laughs> And so Spawn blasts him with another energy blast, another necroplasm energy blast. And Violator is like, ha, you're nice shooting, but you're supposed to hit the target chump. And they're just poking jabs and, you know, clapbacks at each other, you know? And Violator is like, now let me give you a pointer. So Violator and Spawn engage in a brutal showdown with both losing appendages. Violator is surprised Spawn is more powerful and claims he was supposed to be the stronger one. And I'm kind of digging how it's off panel. You don't get to see the violence. You have to imagine the violence because it has to be much more brutal than one would think. Who knows? That's up for the imagination. Now Malboja comes in and tells them both to stop. I gave the both of you far too much credit. It's not necessary to mutilate each other when neither of you can die. Like a pair of jealous siblings, you don't realize the two of you are part of the same family. And like it or not, I'm your daddy and both of you are my bitches. Well, he didn't say that, but it just kind of adds a little bit more sauce and saltiness to it, too. And like a good parent, I can see I need to share some insight to both of you boys to let you know what's going on. You see, destiny and damnation, you control neither. So even though you struggle to make sense of what's happening, it doesn't matter because I run both your lives. 
So Spawn tells him obviously to go to hell and you know Malboja laughs about it, you know, such vigor and humor. But don't be surprised, I do have a soul and 8 billion others, nearly enough to satisfy my needs. Evil can be very addictive, especially after death. The accumulation of souls of the damned can have only one outcome, the destruction of God. Yes, Simmons, there is a God. For an atheist like yourself, that might be a shock. But with all you've been through, I'm sure it's not such a hard concept to follow. So call him what you will, he is now your enemy, Simmons. And this was your choice, Simmons. I don't have the power to turn people away from God. They have to do that willingly. But once they do, I need to seize that moment and make them mine. Once I have them, my powers can and will control them forever, which is where you come in my dear spawn my army is not quite complete i need billions more for the forces of good are naturally quite strong to ensure my eventual victory though i need agents to do my bidding your past human life made you the perfect candidate young brash destructive ruthless and arrogant and a hired killer there's not too many of you around as one of my agents you needed powers to set you apart that was simple but I'd be a fool to make it limitless. You're wise enough to have sensed the draining of that power spawn. If not, let me explain it to you. The more you use your energy, the faster you come to your second death. The slower you use it, the less chance you have of stopping evil around you. Either way, I eventually end up owning your soul. The only choice you have is how fast are you willing to give it to me? I mean, he's just pretty much adding salt to spawns when we're at this point, but my just breaking it down. And all this because of some petty little emotion called love. You humans are so predictable. So you see, my spawn from hell, I can't lose. It's either the depletion of your powers, which leads to your death, which leads to losing your soul to the darkness, and simultaneously killing the so-called bad guys, which helps build my army that much faster, or you do nothing. Just stand by and let the evil and the ugliness prosper here on earth, while your emotions grow colder as you justify to yourself why you needn't to do anything to those who prey on the innocent. Now, let me heal that arm for you, because there's no sense of you wasting any more power, my child. So, Malboja gives him a free arm. He's in a charitable mood, you know, from a hell standpoint. And Violet gets pissed. Hey, what about me? How about a little something for my effort? Look, boss, I did a hell of a job keeping an eye on some of the criminal activities, and I made the cops think there's a lunatic on the loose. Even put a bit of fear in the spawn's heart. Speaking of which, no one warned me of his powers when I got this assignment. I mean, look at this, look at this arm. So in other words, Violator's like, yo, give me my arm back, and you failed to give me some useful information to help me do my job. But Maboja gets mad, puts Violator in his hands and tells him to silence, and clutches him and closes his fist. Let him know, hey, I'm bigger, I'm stronger, and I'm more superior than you, and I'm smarter, and here's why. You have failed me miserably. It's a competence like you that make my battle against the god so laborious. I sometimes think that they're traitors among us. You, Violator, are a sad excuse for hell. I made you of my image, told you to keep a watchful eye on Spawn, prod him if it called for, but you also abuse those powers by going on the killing spree with no agenda in mind. Now, the New York criminals are being cautious. Paranoid thieves serve me no purpose. You, my erratic child, are being grounded. Drops him in his clown form. Even though he heals his arm, he's bound to not morph and clown cannot morph. And clown cannot change form into the violent and he is pissed about that. So even though Malboja restores Spawn's lost arm and shows pity on him, he punishes Violator for his unscheduled killing spree because it has influenced crime lords to slow down their evil ways. So he locks clown in his temporary form for a temporary period of time, but it's undisclosed. Clown yells that he doesn't mind being short, fat, and ugly, even though we know he does. With his rants and vent, you get the picture of how the clown really is. He does what he wants, when he wants, because he just wants to. Then he curses Malboja, and Spawn's looking down on him like, well, you want me to blast a hole through your chest and rip your limbs out again, or what? So in this panel right here at the Fitzgerald residence, Wanda Blake wakes up with a nightmare that Al was reaching out to her for help, but had changed somehow. Terry Fitzgerald lovingly supports her and feels she doesn't have to hide that she can't forget about Al. And that is the end of Spawn issue number four. The best parts about this issue is Spawn and Violator going at it and Malboja explaining the ground rules of everything that's happening to Spawn and that Wanda seems to have the nightmares of her late husband. And there might still be feelings left for him, 
Other than that, the issue delivers as promised. Confrontation between Spawn and Violator, it's fun. And Malboja explaining the ground rules to Spawn and Violator, it ties it all together. Now we know what's at stake here. Like the last issue, this is building up to something more. And here on this channel, we will continue building up on the Spawn content. If you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Don't be shy, don't be stingy. Here are rated comics to do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. And before we close out this video with Spawn issue number four, this video is sponsored by coffee. So if you'd like to buy your boy a cup of coffee, link in description. But the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.